Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 20th of October and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 23rd of October. Once again we've come off the back of a week of record highs with the Dow, DAX, S&P 500 all making new records on virtually a daily basis. FTSE 250 has also hit a new record high while the FTSE 100 has made a new record close. Yet I think when we look at the gains that we've been seeing over the course of the past few days it's hard to escape I think the feeling that we're well overdue a correction even the Nikkei 225 has got in on the act hitting its highest levels since 1996 but I think there are some early signs that maybe momentum may be starting to take a turn um, and that's in the form of commodity prices we've seen copper prices hit three-year highs we've hit palladium prices hit multi-year highs but there is I think some early signs that maybe we could be seeing the first signs of a possible correction. Certainly in the context of palladium prices, I did an article earlier in the week with respect to that and a potential key reversal day on the daily chart for palladium. We can see that borne out with this particular pattern here. Um, we made a new multi-year high in October, but we closed quite significantly aggressively lower. So this could be the beginnings of a potential double top on palladium. What we don't want to see is a move back above those highs that we saw in September and October, which means that as long as we stay below that, then ultimately I think we could see a drift back down towards around about the $900 level. So certainly keep an eye on the performance of palladium, also keep an eye on the performance of copper as well as iron ore, because I think there is some evidence that we could be starting to see a little bit of a short term top starting to form on all of those three commodities. Um, over the course of the next few days. We've also seen some disappointing earnings announcements and while we have seen some downward corrections throughout the week they, they, they have been fairly well bought into but are they, are they an indicator of certainly an underlying slowdown in the global economy? We've seen disappointments from Unilever, from Nestle, from Reckitt Ben Kaiser or consumer retail companies and we saw some very weak retail sales numbers out of the UK so you need, need, to, need to keep an eye out there and I think that's also tempering expectations with respect to a UK rate hike in November. Events in Spain also taking a turn for the worse as I record this video the Spanish government could well be laying the groundwork for triggering article 155 and seizing direct control of the Catalan parliament. So there could be a little bit of geopolit geopolitical risk there. Now the key events for this week are going to be keeping a particularly close eye on the European Central Bank rate meeting. I think that's very, very key because there's been an awful lot of speculation overall about um, what the ECB will do with respect to its tapering program. A lot of speculation that the ECB might start, might, may start to temper or to temper back um, or flesh out, if you like, market expectations of what's going to change as we head into 2018. At the moment, the asset purchase program is 60 billion euros. There has been an awful lot of speculation as to whether or not they'll taper that back to 40 um, over a shorter period of time or 20 billion euros per month over a longer period of time. Ultimately, what Mr. Draghi will want to do is try and temper rate expectations as much as possible. He does not want to see the euro significantly gain over the course of the next few months. Certainly it's gaining quite significantly against the pound. Obviously an awful lot of that is down to sterling weakness and we'll get some indication of that later this week with the first iteration of first quarter UK, third quarter, the first iteration of third quarter GDP from the UK economy. And that could well be disappointing given the very weak retail sales numbers that we saw in September. But it's certainly in the context of what we're talking about now, European Central Bank rate meeting is going to be, a, I think, a key risk event. We've also got the Bank of Canada rate decision as well. Not expecting to see any change there. We've already seen two rate rises this year. I think it's quite a tall order to argue that we'll see a third one given the uncertainty surrounding the NAFTA talks between the US and Mexico. So I think with respect to Canada, I think unchanged is probably the likely outcome there. With respect to the ECB, listen to the press conference and listen for details as to what measures the ECB will coalesce around with respect to tapering their asset purchase program. Key resistances on euro dollar at the moment around about 118.50. 
40 and 118 and 90. We've got this downtrend line here, so need to keep an eye out on that. Also got third quarter US GDP coming out later this week. Will there be a significant hurricane effect? Um, and will that take the edge off the very strong numbers that we saw in Q2, which came in at 3.1? Keep an eye out on that. Obviously, there's going to be um, an evolving um, speculation about the new Fed head, the new Fed chief. Trump's already had meetings with Janet Yellen. He's met Jerome Powell, Kevin Walsh, and John Taylor. Um, at the moment, the front runner does appear to be Jerome Powell if Janet Yellen doesn't get the job. And ultimately, I think he's probably going to be the more dovish outcome of any new Fed chief. So expect that debate to hot up as we head towards the end of the month. Also, good idea to keep an eye out on UK bank earnings in the wake of US bank earnings. We get updates from Lloyds, Barclays, and Royal Bank of Scotland. While on the tech side, we also get updates from Alphabet and Amazon. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.